This is the Verbal Nonsense Podcast. I'm Joel. I'm Todd. And this is Rewind. Uh, where we go back and dig a little deeper into the conversations that we've had and preferably topics that we've covered. What do we got this week? Uh, we're going back to the 1904 St. Louis Olympics. Oh, that Olympics. wonderful marathon. It was a beautiful marathon. Uh, you want to recap on that, or you want me to talk a little bit about it? Or Sure. Uh, this is one of the last, I believe, Olympics where they had marathons. Um, no, I think they still have the marathons. No. I mean, they have races, but they don't do marathons. Yeah, they do. Oh, come on, man. You can look it up. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to look it up. I am going uh, to look at it. All right, anyway. Well, I'll recap while you're doing that. Okay. Uh, and what we covered last time, I believe, was just that, one, it was on a hot summer day because it was indeed the Summer Olympics. Um, and it was really windy, dusty, dirty conditions uh, that was causing issues. And the, the organizers of the race uh, were testing the effects of dehydration on the racers. On the runners, I should say. And uh, that we had a first place winner who caught a ride for the last 10 miles of the race. Uh, a guy who was using Strict 9 uh, as a performance enhancer. And the guy who came in fourth place who stopped and napped on the side of the road after spending all his money before he got there. And... Still came in fourth place after napping. That's the overall gist of the. Uh... Okay, um, I'm going to cut you in uh, about this information. They do still have marathons at the Olympics. Um, the United States actually has the most medals won in the Olympics marathons, but we are tied. We are at second. We're actually tied for second with France for second place in gold medals. We won three. France has won three. Had three silvers, five bronze. Ethiopia is the gold winning champion, total of four gold medals, one silver, and three bronze at the Olympic marathons. Uh, Rio de Janeiro last year, uh, Galen Rupp won a bronze in the marathon there. Um, honestly, however, 2004 Athens. Uh, Mebroth, Meb, <laughs> I, he's he won it for America. I don't think he was from America. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna butcher his name. I'm not even. Oh, Phil, <laughs> Keflez, Lesgay, Lesgi, Keflezgi. I don't know his last name. Anyway, he won silver for the elite. But uh, that was in 2004. Our last medal in the Olympics, though, was from 76, and then it goes on back from there. Apparently the first, uh, supposedly as far as recent, I guess more or less recent Olympics was um, the, the first one in, I guess, in our every four years or whatever it is what we're doing these days. I don't know. Is it four or two that we have several Olympics now? I guess since I'm on the page, I could answer my own question. I was right. gonna say I thought it was every four. Well, yeah, it is, but I remember them trying. I don't know whether the Winter Olympics is every two years now or if it's every four still. I don't know. I remember there being some conversation about it uh, a couple decades ago or whatever. But um, Greece won the gold and silver in the eighteen ninety six Olympics for the marathon. Um, they actually did have a, a water stop. But nah, it was one, one water stop for the whole 24 point whatever miles that they, they ran. Uh, yeah. And the, the guy who, uh, who did go across first, uh, he did get disqualified. So. Yeah, that was, was the guy who took the car ride. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he um he just kind of uh, got a little sleepy, hopped in a car, and rode his way to the finish line. Fred Lors, yeah, yeah, he did a terrible job. Um, so he gets disqualified. So that puts T.J. Hick, the guy who uh, 
took the poison as a performance in here. Apparently, it just wasn't uh, egg whites and strychnine. Apparently, there was also brandy mixed in. Brandy? <laughs> now, something that I did not see originally. Apparently, there were two South End runners who were added last minute. They ran barefoot, and one was chased off the course by wild dogs. A wild pack of family dogs. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Uh, what? Was like that. Who was so it? That, that just... Who was chased off by wild dogs? One of the two South African runners. They were they were added like last minute. They ran the whole race barefoot. Okay, not that guy. And one of them was chased off course by wild dogs. <laughs> so this this thing was just full of shenanigans. It I was know. recapping again. Um, there was one water stop. They said that they, you know, our original story was that there was limited water. I imagine in this, a race, race of this nature, one water stop is limited water. But um, it was a particularly dusty day. There was a dust storm and it was, and it was 90 degrees hot. Outside. It was, yeah, ridiculously hot. I was under the impression this was during the Dust Bowl days. Uh, it wasn't. The Dust Bowl actually occurred about 30 years later almost. I, I, it was just because of the type of roads. I had to, back yeah, there. I had to look it up. I was thinking this was during, but it, it actually wasn't. This was just a bad, bad day. This wasn't like a historical, you know, this is just what was going on in the Midwest at that time. This was just a bad day. and uh, But the Olympics must go on. So um, I'm curious what happened with the, with the family, you know, the, the wild dogs. If he got back on course in place, did it say anything, or did he just say screw it? It just says it just says chased off the course by wild dogs. That's, That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. Um, I I particularly what made this story so interesting to me was uh, our third place runner, and I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible at reading names. I will butcher his name, but this is the Cuban runner. I'm not going to even attempt it. There there actually is. Quite a bit of history about this guy's life. Unfortunately, it is in a book that's written in Spanish that is no longer in print. Well, you got to take into uh, consideration that, you know, these guys were all under severe dehydration, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Massive cramping of muscles. And, uh, well, yeah. I mean, you watch a marathon now. There are people on the sidelines throwing water bottles at people. And I understand there probably wasn't a whole lot of water bottles back then, but... There could have been people there just giving water, you know. It's just um, a tin cup. I don't know what they used back then, I'm sure. But they could have just tossed it and somebody could have picked it up. You know, it's they didn't need lounge chairs and peeled grapes. You know, they just needed water, you know. Um, I understand a marathon is testing the limits, but these people's limits were being tested as soon as they woke up that morning. I mean, the, the people who said that were literally... Like, yeah, we're going to trust the effects of dehydration on runners. This will be a great time to do it. We'll, we'll, we're holding the, the World Olympics. Perfect well, time to churn. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a management decision to me. That, that you know, um, I don't think that um, the coordinator or the people who actually wanted to give the world a public display of the greatest runners in the world were uh, cooperative in uh, the whole, let's dehydrate our athletes. That was something. Apparently, just the runners. Cause, uh... <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know, half of them barely showed up as it was. I mean, it... <laughs> well, uh, I looked it up. Turns out there was thirty-one people in there. Thirty-one people, and the guy who took the nap still took third. Yeah. That. <laughs> The, the, the Cuban so who gambled all I mean, his money. How many people got who dropped out? You know, just dropped out of the race and said, screw this, I'm done. You know, yeah, I didn't find anything about that. I looked around a little bit. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to dig in because, you know, our Cuban, our Cuban athlete who ate rotten apples, who took a nap, who showed up still wearing dress clothes, who took a knife and cut his pants to make them shorts and ran barefoot – Placed fourth, he got third by default after first place cheated. I'm just wondering, like, if there's more information, because I, I dug, 
I didn't go to the library. I didn't, you know, dig up like, you know, encyclopedias from 1940. But I looked. Joel looked. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I did. I'm just curious on how many people just said, you know what, screw this. This is the worst marathon I've ever been in. Because clearly there are people who left that day who said, this is by far the most inhumane environment I have ever had to display my ability. Or, you know, that, that dude, uh, Carbajal or whatever, I'll butcher it, I don't care. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, that dude was just hardcore. I mean, the guy did run the length of Cuba. He did. He did run the length of Cuba. He raised the money. He was kind of a degenerate from what it sounds like. But he was obviously a good athlete. Um, they were probably all very capable athletes. I'm, I'm, you're at the Olympics. You know what I mean? Even the worst is better than anything I could think of doing. They, it was a real scandal. You know, that guy, I, I'm not really sure what what the state of Cuba was. I do enjoy reading Hemingway. And um, he, he wrote a lot about the state of Cuba and a couple of his books. And it sounded like a real party place. I'm trying to remember the name of the book I wrote about recently. I can't. Hemingway. He liked to ramble on, kind of like I do. So maybe that's why I liked him. But no, you know, you ran the length of Cuba. You know, it was Hemingway's your spirit animal? Is that what you're saying? <sighs> Hemingway's like my beer coaster, I guess. <laughs> you know. Your kindred soul. Yeah, it's like the place where I put trusted things. He's Hemingway's my beer coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not my spirit animal. If anybody has any more information about the 1904 marathon, I would be very interested myself um absolutely preferably about our third place winner because in reality i think there should be a movie made about this guy i really really honestly believe that i would definitely maybe star in uh michael pena that's all i had about it you know yeah that's all i was able to dig up there isn't a whole lot of information there that i, I could find anyway no I, and i i really feel cheated by historians um but literally, that, that is a call out from me personally. I would like to know more. If you are a connoisseur of the 1904 marathon, uh, hit me up about it. I am very, very interested. If you have transcribed an English version of, um, of the book written about the third place winner that's uh, only printed in Spanish, I would love an English copy if you want to go ahead and translate that for me. Um, if you would like a written transcript of this episode of Rewind, I hope you um, go ahead and start the video over and transcribe that because I don't have them. I'm Todd. I'm Joel. And that was Rewind. Thank you for watching.